Hey everyone, Dr. Luke Peterson here with the Knee Replacement Therapist. In this episode of the Knee to Know Show, we're going to look at the physical requirements at your knee, at your hip, throughout your leg for good gait and walking after knee replacement surgery. Hey everyone, hope you're having a good day today. So for this video, we're looking specifically at what are the physical requirements? What are the biomechanical requirements on your body for being able to walk? And not just being able to walk, but being able to walk in a gait pattern in a way that is relatively quote unquote common or normal, if you wanna use that term, or um, something that is basically relatively energy efficient, pain-free, um, standard, normal type of walking. Obviously, everyone's gonna have a little bit of deviations, a little bit of variations. We're all humans, we're not um, robots or machines. We all walk a little bit differently here and there, but there's some overriding kind of big picture things that are very normal and very common in someone that walks in what we call, for lack of a better term, a normal pattern or a pattern that is, you know, relatively energy efficient and um, appropriate. So first of all, let's look at the knee because obviously we're talking about knee replacement surgery. So what do you need at your knee? Well, the one thing you definitely need is a certain amount of range of motion. So you need to be able to straighten the knee and you need to be able to bend it. So for straightening, you want to get to at least zero degrees. So that perfectly straight um, zero degrees range of motion. This is going to be particularly important when you go to make that initial contact when you put your foot first on the ground. If you're able to get the knee nice and straight, you can use kind of that heel contact, have the foot out nice and far in front of you, and then you kind of rock over that foot and that leg. If you're not able to straighten the leg, you're going to put a lot more stress on different muscles and different parts of the body. Um, you're not going to be able to maybe get that heel contact. So you really want to be able to have straight zero degrees knee extension. For bending or flexion, you want to get to at least 65 degrees. And this is a functional 65 degrees, which means that you might be able to get to 65 degrees when you're laying on a table or sitting in a chair, but are you able to do that when you're up and standing, when you're walking, when you're doing activities? Um, this is going to be particularly important for that swing phase of walking. So once you lift that toe up and lift that foot up behind you, you have to bend the knee up so that then you can swing the foot through and you're not hitting your toes, um, not hitting your foot on the ground as you swing your foot forward to take that next step. So you want at least 65 degrees of bending flexion that you can do actively while standing up. And so for all these things that I'm gonna go through today, the thing to think about is, okay, what activities, what exercises besides walking themselves by itself can I do to help address these physical needs? So for range of motion, okay, I need to do my knee extension and straightening exercises. I need to do my bending exercises, my heel slides, my seated knee flexion, whatever that may be. I need to take care of that and get my knee range of motion. And so let's move down. The next thing we wanna look at is strength. So you wanna have some strength in your quadriceps of your thigh. You wanna have some strength in your hamstrings, of course, and that can be important for different reasons. But the big thing I would say for strengthening for walking is in the hips. The hips, particularly your gluteus medius muscles, the hip abductors. So these muscles that basically keep your pelvis in a nice alignment, don't cause you not to drop down or have this hitch in your step or um, compensate in all sorts of different ways that we can talk about more in other videos. But you want to have strong hip muscles. So your gluteus medius muscles, your hip abductor muscles in particular, but also your hip flexors, your hip extensor muscles too. And so when you're thinking about that, you're thinking about, okay, am I doing exercises that address strengthening my hip muscles? Am I doing maybe um, sideline leg raises? Am I doing clamshells? 
Am I doing some sort of standing exercise? Um, good, strong, adequate hip strength is very important for walking and walking with a good, energy efficient manner that is pain free. The next thing on my list is balance and stability. So you need to have some level of balance and stability to walk and be comfortable walking. You're, when you're walking, it's an alternate between standing on one leg and then the other leg by themselves. So some things I work on are single leg balance, just standing on one leg. Can you hold that for 10 seconds or can you hold that for 20 seconds? Can you balance on one leg while the other leg is moving? And I'll show you some exercises for that in some later videos. Um, you have to be able to have the balance and the stability to be able to stand on the one leg and then alternating as you're walking to as you stand on the one leg, the other leg swinging, and then vice versa. And with that comes being able to weight shift. So shifting your weight onto each leg and being comfortable standing on your surgical leg and standing on your non-surgical leg with a majority of your body weight on that leg. And in that same tone, in that same um, discussion is pain management. Do you have significant pain when you're up and standing that being able to stand on that leg and that knee is really uncomfortable and you can't tolerate it? If you have such bad pain and discomfort that you can't move in a normal pattern or you can't attempt to move in certain ways, that's going to affect your gait. That's going to cause impairments. Um, we call it antalgic gait, so painful gait or painful walking. Um, so you really have to also address that pain management. What am I doing to address my pain? Make sure I don't have too much pain because that's going to affect my movement. That's going to affect my walking as well. And then we, I wrote coordination. So kind of talked about that already, having that coordination to do the different movements, to shift your weight, to balance on one leg, and um, just be comfortable with the different movement requirements of walking. And so why do I talk about all these physical requirements of walking? Why do we care? Why should it matter? And like I was saying somewhat at the beginning of this video, when you talk about what can I do to improve my walking? Well, you have, if you are able to improve these components and these physical requirements of walking, then you're going to in turn be able to improve the walking. So for example, if you're limited by pain right now, well then you can do all you want, but you're, if you still have significant pain, then you're not going to probably walk very well. So you've got to find ways to address your pain levels. If that's icing, if that's pain medication, if that's different movements and stretches, um, you know, you have to work on addressing the pain levels. Maybe you have deficits in your strength and strength in your hips and the strength in your quadricep muscles. And so you have to do certain exercises and activities to address those. And as you do that, and as you get stronger and build stability and strength, you're going to notice that your walking is going to get better and improve and become easier. And then the same thing with your range of motion. As you get to that range of motion that you can both do laying on a table or in a chair, but also while standing up, then the more comfortable you get with achieving that bending and straightening of the knee, then you're going to notice that the walking improves more and more there as well. So that's just one way to start to look at walking and improving your walking. If you improve the different impairments and address the different components and the different requirements, then as you address those specific things, the goal and the idea is that that is going to start to carry over to the functional activities such as walking, such as squatting, such as things like that. So address the impairments and that's going to carry over to the actual functional task of walking and help improve that. And so that's just one angle and one way to look at it. Um, tomorrow's video, I'm going to talk about some of the common impairments, um, the common things that you see with um, someone who's walking after knee replacement surgery. What are some of the common impairments that we see in the common um, things that are abnormal. And so we'll look at that a little bit deeper tomorrow morning, but just kind of getting the conversation started with walking and gait and improving walking and maximizing the efficiency and the comfort with walking after knee replacement surgery. So this has been the need to know show. 
as always, I just ask if you enjoy these videos and you want to see more, please subscribe. Um, please leave any comments or questions that you may have and likes and um, hearts and all those things are always very much appreciated. Thank you very much for watching everyone. Have a great rest of your day.